listen to the wind. Drifting past your senses is the fuel that fires the imagination. Close your eyes and breathe deeply. Consider the element that floods into your lungs, the very same substance that long ago fanned an ancient spark, ignited by a primeval author, chiseling veiled petroglyphs across a dim cave wall. Carried on a breeze spanning eons, it was the breath that gave rise to dinosaurs, grew papyrus for paper, and dried vibrant oils brushed over canvas. It has since walked on the surface of the moon. It fondly recollects a childhood memory, violently reshapes the landscape of history, and blows away the fog surrounding the unknown. It rushes by in a heartbeat, inhaled at first, exhaled at last. One moment here, the next gone into thin air. WAIR Talk Radio 1313 on your AM dial, broadcasting live into thin air, from sea to shining sea, and far into the great beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. We interrupt our regularly scheduled thin air broadcast to bring you this urgent, on-location report by our intrepid man in the field, Chet Huxley. While on assignment, Chet has been unexpectedly diverted and thrust into the investigation and documentation of a most bizarre story. The notion that Earth is being secretly invaded by malevolent creatures from outer space, beings apparently hell-bent on taking over the world, disguised as mild-mannered, filling station attendants. It seems that Chet has uncovered this dastardly plot almost by accident while driving, having picked up a bizarre commercial radio transmission for the Star Petroleum Company while reporting out in the New Hampshire wilderness. And so, without further ado, we bring you Chet Huxley. Thanks, Clayton. Hello, fellow Earthlings. Before we begin our little odyssey, I should point out that I did not initially intend to take this little side road leading into the backwoods of the unexplained. On the contrary, my initial story was supposed to be a feel-good piece about a beautiful vacation getaway, the Indian Head Cabins and Resort nestled deep in the heart of New Hampshire's majestic White Mountains. Shortly before arriving at my destination, I had been listening to music, lost in the moment and in the beauty of my surroundings, when all of a sudden, this bizarre commercial spot broke in over the airwaves, promoting a chain of gas stations all across the U.S. The Star Petroleum Company. Not much of a promotion, just the company name and a slogan. Your destination is in our hands. The Star Petroleum Company. Your destination is in our hands. I suppose, if anything, the ad proved to be particularly timely, as I realized my 55 Chevy Nomad was running on fumes, sputtering along about 10 miles distant from the resort. Somewhat alarmed that I might just have to hoof it the rest of the way, I was relieved to catch sight of a weathered plywood road sign cut in the shape of an arrow pointing down an obscure path leading deep into the densely forested tree line. Star Petrol, your destination is in our hands, same as the broadcast. Without so much as a second thought, I veered off US Route 3 and rumbled into the shadowy, overgrown bramble, my headlamps providing the only source of illumination. After bouncing my way about a mile into the dense forest, 
I finally spotted a dim glow in a clearing ahead. Odd, I thought to myself. Certainly not conveniently located. I suppose eccentricity is a luxury out here. Any kind of wacky signage to attract attention, but in this case, completely misplaced. Two weather-worn gas pumps stood there in the soft glow of what looked like a large dome-shaped awning, a cylindrical structure with a weird incandescent light source emulating from somewhere within. The shape was bolted to a rusted metal column that rose up from between the two pumps on a broken concrete block and seemed, at least to me, to bear a striking resemblance to that ship in that new science fiction flick. The one that just came out, what was it? Forbidden something? Well, anyway, as I was saying, some pretty far out signage, but maybe built before Mother Nature walled it all in from the flow of traffic and the passers-by. My tires rolled across an outstretched hose and a bell sounded from somewhere inside a little broken down shack a short distance away, shrouded at the edge of the encroaching tree line. Weirdness factor notwithstanding, I needed gas, so I shut off the engine and waited. And waited. Service station was a bit of a stretch, I thought. After several more minutes of sitting there waiting to quote, fill her up, end quote. I laid on the horn, a few loud blasts, jarring enough, I imagine, to rouse a slacking attendant on duty to sudden alertness. Still not seeing any evidence of movement anywhere on the grounds, I opened the car door and piled out. The awning overhead was immense. Upon closer examination, immense and otherworldly. I know, I know. Strange choice of words, but seriously. That's the only notion that came to mind. The light wasn't neon. Not fluorescent, either. It seemed to be some kind of byproduct. Incandescence bleeding off an idling, concentrated power source. I was just about to pull the nozzle off the hook and pump the gasoline myself, when, to my surprise, I noticed a little wisp of a man, an odd, deathly pale being, dressed head to toe in a frayed, oil-stained coverall, standing motionless in front of my car, looking back at me. Check under the hood for you, sir, he asked in a deadpan tone. Oh, uh, yeah. Please, fill her up, too, I replied. Might want to check the pressure in the tires. Sure thing, mister. Whole nine yards, coming up. He seemed good-natured enough, eager to chalk up a satisfied customer to what I imagined must be a rather short list way out here in the sticks. At first, he just commenced to going about his business, wiping down the windshield, popping the hood, and eyeballing the dipstick, topping off the radiator, etc., etc. He checked over everything in short order, efficiently enough, certainly, to forgive and forget his delayed response when I first pulled in. As I watched him work, I started sizing him up wondering why anyone would want a seemingly thankless job like this, catering to the hapless few patrons who actually find this place so remote, so far off the beaten path. As he knelt down and started putting air in the tire nearest me, I became more than a little bit alarmed by the pallor of his skin. Neckline in plain view above the collar of his coveralls. Gray. Seriously, there was no flesh tone to his flesh at all. 
Maybe it was the light. I had already noted an unusual quality to the illumination. Maybe so, I mistakenly uttered aloud. I couldn't take it back. The comment hanging out there by mistake. How's that, mister? The attendant asked over his shoulder. Oh, it's nothing, I stammered. Just thinking out loud is all. I see, he replied. Seems you humans are endlessly hung up on the color of someone's skin. He pulled the air hose off the valve of my tire and turned to face me. He was gray, all right, apparently from the crown of his bald head to the toes of his strangely shoeless feet. You have such a unique opportunity here, he went on, and no idea how rare is your place in the universe. It's all good, though. We'll take the real estate off your hands, certainly, before you either nuke it to a cinder or just bleed it all dry of the so-called natural resources. As far as custodians are concerned, you're being relieved of duty. And our little chain of service stations will be overseeing the transition. We've got dibs moving forward. I didn't know how to respond. We? I managed. I don't follow. The attendant scoffed. Of course you don't. You never will. Probably not even to that glorious, nebulous moment when the last of you is finally asked to leave. I'm sure he must have recognized the wide-eyed panic on my face. It was pretty much unavoidable. Fighting back the urge to run, I tried my best to compose myself and stand my ground. Gesturing to my car, I said nervously, Are we all finished here? I, um, need to be getting back on the road. The attendant got to his feet and rolled up the air hose, draping it back over an old hook that was welded to the column between the pumps. You're good to go, he informed me, for a little while, anyhow. That'll be... Five dollars. I pulled out my wallet and handed him the cash, then stepped around the back of my nomad, quickly making my way to the driver's side door. I appreciate the top-notch work, I said. The attendant pulled an old rag out of his pocket and dabbed his forehead. I'd like to tell you that's what I'm here for, but then... That would be dishonest. As if it were quite an effort to do so, he smiled, an awkward little bend upward in the corners of his lipless mouth. I'm glad you're satisfied, he said, reaching into the pocket of his coveralls. Be sure to tell all your friends about us. They may not believe you, but... By all means, tell them anyway. It would be a shame not to be prepared. Pitched between his thumb and index finger, the man produced a business card and held it out over the hood of my car, upon which was printed simply, Star Petrol, and beneath it, the tagline, Your Destination is in our hands. I cautiously snapped up the tiny piece of rectangular paper and then climbed in behind the wheel. I'll do that, I said, tossing the card up on the dash. And thanks again. 
With that, I twisted the key in the ignition and put the car in gear, slowly turning back toward the trail leading up to Route 3. Just before I reached the edge of the clearing and filling station grounds, a thought occurred to me and I stepped down on the brakes. Hey buddy, I called out through the open window. You don't happen to have a map showing where all the star stations are located, do you? I'm on my way cross country and I'd sure like to know every location where I can expect such reliable service. So, he said, you want a star map, huh? Let me see if I've got an extra one back in the shed, he said. And, oh, by the way, the name's not Buddy. It's Earl. Earl Epsilon. It'll be on the flip side of that card I just gave you. Now, sit tight, wait here, and I'll go have a look around for the map. I was on a hair trigger already, but that old newsman's insatiable curiosity thing was holding my foot down hard on the brake pedal until I had some kind of clue how to find more of these little Shadowland outposts. There's a story here somewhere, and I'm gonna find it. I watched a cluster of fireflies flitting back and forth between the tall underbrush until finally Earl came plodding back across the distance from the office and handed me a folded U.S. map, clearly marked star locations in the same utilitarian typeface as the business card. That, he said, will get you there. Most times, you'll need to take a little detour, just like you did getting here. Even if you just get close, don't worry. If you don't find us straight away, we'll find you. That's reassuring, I replied sarcastically. All this and roadside assistance too. Star service that's out of this world. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Earl said in an eerie sing-song tone, you can trust your car to the man from another star. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to say that we seem to have lost the connection with our intrepid man in the field, Chet Huxley. Please stay tuned to Thin Air Radio for continuing coverage and breaking news concerning this most unusual development. I'm not quite sure what to make of it so far, but it does seem as though Chet has definitely stumbled headlong into something very odd indeed. To all of our faithful listeners, be sure to follow Chet as he continues unraveling the mystery and send along your thoughts and hypotheses via the Thin Air Podcast Anthology YouTube channel. As always, we appreciate your feedback. Good night. Episode 21 of the Thin Air Podcast Anthology, You Can Trust Your Car to the Man from Another Star, was written, produced, directed, narrated, and told by R.J. Lonsdale. The voices of Clayton Lomax, Chet Huxley, and Earl Epsilon were performed by R.J. Lonsdale. Audio production for this Thin Air episode by R.J. Lonsdale of Flyby Studios. Music compositions used in this episode include Martian Cowboy by Kevin MacLeod, 
Good Morning Kids by Felipe Andorno Vaseo and Dark Memories of the Past Still Linger from COAG Music licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. This has been an RJ Lonsdale Flyby Studios presentation.